Hey guys, I wanted to do a video today that is um, a little more serious and focused on a specific topic. I know, crazy! Um, something that just came to mind this morning to me uh, while I was looking through um, a Facebook support group that I'm part of. I'm actually a part of quite a few of them. Um, a lot of them are really good. I really like um, Iliostomy and Ostomy. I don't know if they asked me once, just called Ask Me. It's like, Ask Me Land is good. Um, I'm also part of a very large group, um, support group for ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. Um, and then I'm a part of some support groups that are more uh, for Wisconsin and Midwest, you know, trying to do meetups and talk about doctors and things like that. Um, this is something I actually first experienced all the way back on Healing Well. Healing Well is probably the best at not doing it. And, um, I appreciate that from them. Um, I also experience it a lot in personal conversation. Um, and I've done it as well. I know I have. I'm not, you know, free of fault. I've done this for sure. Um, but something that I've noticed over the last year and a half in personal conversations and just seeing it online, um, is people who are trying to one-up each other with their diseases. Um, when it comes to inflammatory bowel disease, it sucks. It sucks for all of us. Um, and I'm not talking about Crohn's versus ulcerative colitis. Uh, a lot of people with ulcerative colitis will happily admit that Crohn's is seems like a worse disease to them, you know, that they're glad they don't have it. You know, I'm not speaking for everyone, but a lot of the people I talk to um, agree with that. And people with Crohn's are, I don't know if they're just humble or just sweet or what, or if I've just come in contact with really great people with Crohn's, but they all say, no, you know, this is IBD. We're all a part of the same thing. It sucks for all of us. And that's the attitude I want to talk about today. Um, One-upping and trying to say my disease is worse than yours uh, compared to just acceptance and just supporting each other and being there for each other. Um... Now, I don't think some people do it on purpose. I think it might just be in our personalities. You know, someone, say you're having a conversation, and, oh, I sh you know, I shit 20 times today. The other person replies, oh, that's terrible. I feel you, I shit 30, 30 times today. And then the next person goes, well, that's not counting the two times I didn't make it. So I actually had two accidents today. I ruined two pairs of pants today. It's crazy. And they're like, that's nuts. I was including the four accidents I had. I ruined four pairs of pants today. And I'm like, well, I couldn't believe how much blood there was. You know, I, every time I wiped it, there was blood. And the next person says, oh, well, my toilet bowl was full of blood. It's like, wait, why are we com why are we competing with how bad our disease is? You know, and it's sometimes it's just part of our personalities. Maybe somebody complains, you know, that they went to the bathroom 10 times and you're like, that's nothing. I went 20. I mean, they need to understand how bad I feel and I'm going to let them know, well, 10 is nothing. Try going 20 or 30. And it's it's not just in our personalities, but maybe us trying to show how bad we feel. We want people to understand how we feel. We want people to know that we're in a lot of pain and our quality of life is highly diminished and we want people to understand that. So when somebody says, you know, I had an accident, instead of relating and saying, that happens to me and I'm sorry and it sucks, you know, if you're having a bad day, your response might be like, screw your one accident, I had five accidents today, or I haven't left the toilet, or, you know, it's just a response because you're feeling so bad. But when it comes to these support groups, we're here to support each other. Um, we're not here to make other people feel like their symptoms aren't as bad or their symptoms, you know, are not as, they're not handling them right. You know, sometimes if we tell someone, you know, oh, you, you're crying and upset. I don't know if somebody would be that rude, but you're crying and upset because, you know, you have had these stomach aches and you've had diarrhea a lot today, and, you know, your family's not very accepting, and you'd be like, 
well, mine's worse. My husband left me, you know. It's we're just trying to get our emotions across, and we don't need to make somebody else's situation feel worse. Then that person is like, oh, well, what am I complaining about? You know, I must be a loser. I must be whiny, and, and we already have all these problems mentally when we're dealing with these diseases at their worst, you know, of, of guilt and um, feeling helpless and being a burden. So we don't need to add to somebody else's feeling of, wow, I guess I'm not that sick. I need to quit whining about it because we are all that sick. You know, it's, it's a matter of perspective. When I talked on the forums about my accidents, I had a lot of accidents. Um, my urgency was terrible. I wore Depends every day for about eight, nine, ten months, and I would probably crap my pants two to three times a day. Some days it was only once, some rare days it was never, and some days it was a lot more where I would just stay on the toilet because that was easier. Um, and a lot of people said once I was having my surgery consult and getting ready to have surgery, people said, you know, with your accidents alone, I would have had surgery a while ago. You know, it's the quality of life. That's something that they couldn't accept. For them, they wouldn't have wanted to do that. They wouldn't have been able to do that. You know, at my job, if I crap my pants, I could just go and I kept diapers in the bathroom because it was a small place and I could do that. I would just change out diapers and wipe up really easy. You know, it wasn't a huge deal to me. Um, same thing with at home. If I had a problem, you know, my husband would help me if, if I needed. My cats were always staring at me to support me. <laughs> and so my problem wasn't that bad. To me, it didn't affect my quality of life that bad. But for people who are having, you know, maybe they're only having diarrhea 10 times a day, but they are running to the bathroom 30 because they're they get the feeling that they need to go and they need to go now and it's, you know, it's phantom, but that's still, it interrupts your life. And so for them, if that's something that they can't handle is that life interruption or that always worrying, you know, that's a big deal. Maybe it's, to me, that would be a big deal. Um, my accidents aren't the reason I had surgery. My reason for surgery was because of my weight loss and of not, you know, I lost 50 pounds and trying to you know, I couldn't get nutrition and I couldn't keep weight on very easy and it was just getting bad that way. Um, and the pain, the pain was probably my number one reason. Um, and speaking of weight, I mean, that's something that I know I've done myself when people are like, you know, I can't, I've, that's probably one of the huge things I hear all the time. You know, I, I lost 50 pounds and that number alone is so huge for people to understand. I had that weight to lose. Yeah. If a 110 pound girl lost 50 pounds, she'd be dead. So you know, that's a big deal. Um, I know a girl who's 110 pounds and she lost like 30 pounds and it happened in a matter of weeks for her. And that's crazy to me. I mean, I see her and she's so tiny and, you know, that's a big deal. And that's why she, I mean, she was in the hospital and she had to choose to have surgery. Um, where other people, you know, will start comparing. I find myself always trying to say that I lost my my 50 pounds within a matter of a couple months. But then when people are like, well, I lost 20 pounds in a week. And I'm like, well, I guess mine was really more like a month. No, it wasn't. It was 50 pounds in a couple months. A month and a half, two months. You know, I didn't really keep track of it. I didn't notice. Um, besides doctor visits, I don't have a timeline of, you know, when I was losing this weight. I didn't have even have a scale yet until I lost a lot of weight and I went and bought a scale because I was trying to make sure I maintained my weight. So it's all in all, I just want to talk about, you know, each person's situation is the worst to them. It's about your quality of life. It's about your perspective of your symptoms. Um, of course, there are some people who, when they first get diagnosed, they are overly emotional as expected. And maybe, you know, they're only having diarrhea four times a day now, they've never had an accident, they don't have any pain, you know, they just I can't believe they're having diarrhea all the time, which is, it's out of the norm. It is scary. It's weird. It's not good. And the important thing is to educate them, and they support them. They are lucky. 
Um, they don't need to be reminded of that and told, oh, you, you crap all the time? Well, that's nothing. No, they need to be reminded, like, that's good. Your disease maybe hasn't affected you that much yet. It's not that severe or it's not that much of your intestine or, you know, encourage and support them to get help and to make sure they maintain and stay on top of it because they have a good shot of, you know, not needing surgery or maybe staying in remission for a long time, those sort of things. We don't have to tell them, well, that's nothing. You know, if we greet them with that kind of attitude, they're not going to stay in the support group. They're not going to stay on the forum or on the group on Facebook. They're going to feel dejected. They're going to feel like they don't matter and their disease doesn't matter and their experience doesn't matter. And then maybe they won't get the education that they could have from the people in the group. And maybe it gets worse and worse. And what, when they finally come back and say, I had seven accidents today, are we going to listen to them? You know, that's not that's not the way it's supposed to be. So this isn't me, you know, trying to be negative, but it's something I've noticed and it's something I've done. And it's not good. We need to be here for each other. Quality of life is where it's at. I mention the quality of life all the time. You know, when people are like, am I not sick enough to get surgery? And to me, my personal view is, you know, surgery is a last resort. It's when your quality of life is not being, it's not being helped. You know, none of the medications worked for me. Their prednisone didn't work for me. I couldn't, you know, have a bridge from one medicine to the next because prednisone wasn't there to keep me stable enough. You know, I didn't have an option. And some people are like, well, if I get back on prednisone, I can try this new medicine. If I get back on prednisone, I can try this. Or, you know, this is working good enough. But I still feel like surgery would be better. It's like, it's all about your quality of life. When it comes to your symptoms, your disease, how you feel, it's about your quality of life. If you're tired of not being able to leave the house because of your anxiety about accidents or having to use a restroom, not being able to find one, that's no life. You should be able to leave the house. For me, I could leave the house. I did leave the house. I had accidents everywhere. I've pooped all over this town. <laughs> and people don't even know. Um, so yeah, it's... It's just something that I've thought about before and I know I'm guilty of. And I know people that I like and care about are also guilty of. Um, and not a lot of people do it maliciously. I've never really seen it nastily done. Um, especially towards a new person. You know, towards a new person, it's about getting them education and making, getting them on the right track right away. You know, it's a blessing that they come to us not feeling as bad as we do. I mean, that's important. That's awesome. Good for them. Let's help them. Maybe they'll never get to this point. So um, just wanted to add some perspective on that today. It was on my mind, and it seemed like a good thing to make a video about since normally I just talk about my butt. Um, yeah, so that is my, my opinion and my thought for the day. I hope you all consider it. And just try to go forward and kind of watch your language, you know, and, and try to catch yourself doing the one-upping and stopping it. And instead changing it, you know, to, I know how you feel. I've been there. If you need to rant and rave about how you feel, do it. There, The Facebook is just amazing for that. I mean, also on my forums, I use healingwell.com. You know, if you just need to post a rant, post a rant. But don't do it against somebody else when they come to you and say, this is how I feel. If you are too upset about your own situation at that time, don't communicate back with that person then. You know, you don't need to. Uh, somebody else will will support them. Um, yeah. Okay. This is long enough. Have a great day, guys. Stay strong. Um, we'll get through it. And be positive. Be supportive and be helpful. Bye.